They're eating the dogs, the people that came in. They're eating the cats. They're eating, they're eating the pets of the people that live there. He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured. I only need 11,000 votes. Fellas, I need 11,000 votes. Give me a break. She was always of Indian heritage until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black. I have concepts of a plan. They take your child, it was a he, and comes back a she. For 54 years, they were trying to get Roe v. Wade terminated, and I did it. There has to be some form of punishment. For the woman? Yeah. We fight like hell, and if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. Imagine a young girl looking in the mirror, searching for role models in the world to give her hope that one day she too can make a difference. Now imagine how she feels when she watches women being verbally attacked. What a stupid question that is. But I watch you a lot. You ask a lot of stupid questions. And I've got that loser who doesn't have the energy of a rabbit. Aligned. There's something wrong with Kamala. And I just don't know what it is, but there is definitely something missing. Belittled. I'm not thinking, Mr. That's President. That's okay. I know you're not thinking. You never do. I'm sorry? Harassed. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black and now she wants to be known as black. We can't stand you, you're a shit vice president. Insulted. We're going to defeat crazy Kamala. Kamala. You know, there's about 19 different ways of saying it. She only likes three. Kamala, she goes, Kamala. No, it's Kamala. Your daughters are absorbing that message right in front of your eyes. Blood coming out of her wherever. It's crazy. And there you have it, some kids that are witnessing hate. And many of you may know already by now that Mr. Trump and his hateful rally that was racist to the core took place there in New York. And many of you know what was said about Puerto Ricans and blacks and you name it and many things that couldn't have been that they can't play and found out as well that this comedian wanted to call Kamala the C word, but they, the Trump campaign said, no, no, you can't do that. But they were okay with all of that. And this is the problem that we're talking about right now with the spiritual abuse. New message is spiritually abusive parents that we're focusing on, on this particular message. And I want you to stay to the end because I have a big statement to make about this that I think comment that I want you guys' thoughts. I believe it's a powerful statement that I'm getting ready to make about it, and it needs to be heard. And the notes. The notes are coming heavy. We've got several videos I'm going to try to kick out this week, uh, three more possibly, and we may even go live Saturday because there's so much talk to talk about as we lead up to the election point. And it needs to be talked about on a spiritual level. And I have on here that, you know, that, you know, as parents, that you want to be a good example to your kids and raise them the right way. Now, many of you that's followed me for a long time, you know I didn't get to grow up with my parents. I lost my parents, my father uh, to murder and mother to suicide, so I didn't have that. My dad's sister raised me, and one thing that she taught me, and let's go back, what she said was that day when we came into Ohio, that night that my uncle, my dad's brother, brought us into the kitchen, and she looked at me and my brother. I remember this. I was five years old. I remember her saying, I said this before, but this is what she said. She said, I can't replace your mother or father, but I'm going to do the best I can. Them words have been tucked away in my heart till this day, and it will be there till the day I die, because I didn't know what that meant or so. But I can look back as an adult man, as I became aware of, uh, you know, as I grow, begin to grow, I didn't understand it at 18. I didn't understand it in my 20s. I didn't understand it right off. But as I matured, I understood it. And she cared. She taught me a work ethic, what it meant, I, I mean, what it mean to, you know, just trying to make ends meet, being that she was poor and trying to take care of me and my brother and her kids as well and struggling. But she sold dinners because she can cook. So to make extra money, 
she is set up there and have on the porch, you know, meals, whatever the price was at that time, and people would stop the cars to get a meal. And then she may go deliver a meal. Then she was doing Uber before it was Uber, taking people to friends or people or someone to hospital, uh, doctor's appointments or to the grocery store just to get some extra money. And taught me that whenever you get a job, don't just stand around. Keep a rag in your hand, you know, a broom, something. You want to look busy at all times. Taught me values and things. And one of the other things she said, as I have in my note that I always remember, that she said was, God doesn't like ugly. And what does that mean? God doesn't like ugly. In other words, I don't, I don't know exactly I have to do the research on that saying. Some of you that's older, you might know. Uh, where did that saying come from? But what it basically means is God does not like people that make fun of people, people that mistreat people, people that do people wrong, and all of that. She taught me this as a young child when I was young. God does not like ugly and taught me that respect for elders, respect for people in general, respect for somebody that's handicapped, respect, respect, respect. She taught me that and still values and morals in me. She wasn't a church woman or anything, but she taught me that. And I value that, me and my brother. And this is what you have right now. You have people that support Mr. Trump in this movement that they don't, you wonder what happened. Some of them have been raised with values and things like that. But for some reason, when they converted, because you weren't a Christian when you were born, <laughs> so whether you think you were or not, all of us are new creations in Christ, you know, once we give our life to him. So if you claim you gave your life to the Lord or whatever, you weren't brand new, just right. I mean, the top, you had to go through this sanctification process and growth and things like that. And you sat there and you had to go through some things and stuff. So you sat back and you didn't forgot about what grandma and your mama and your daddy has taught you because now. You didn't got so impatient as we talked about in the other message with the world, impatient with what's going on, impatient with church things and, and forgot about discipleship and how to go about it, that you have placed all your trust in politicians and the government and one man in particular, regardless if he's lawless, regardless if he's racist, regardless if he's hateful. Regardless if the people around him are scheming and plotting and already trying to set up something just in case they lose to try to overturn the election again. You don't care. You didn't throw it out the window. And you, if you are a grandparent, if you are a parent or whatever you are, you are a spiritually abusing your kids. Because just like I remember everything my auntie raised me up on and these certain values and, and, and integrity and, and, and all of the things she taught me, you know what? Your kids, you're laying the foundation for them, just like in them video clips. They see what's going on. And some of them, they may not recognize it now. They may be too young, just like I didn't understand that my aunt, when she said, I'm going to do the best I can. And even though I couldn't understand why she was overprotective and certain things she was doing during times. And I couldn't do this or that. But she was protecting me because she loved me. That's why she was doing it. And they don't understand it right now. Many of the kids. For those, some of you that's got younger kids and things. But you know what? It's going to come a day that they will understand. And they're going to understand that you supported hate. They're going to understand that you demonized other people. They're going to understand that you claimed yourself to be a Christian and that you did not go about any type of discipleship, but that you relied on trying to use the government to force people to believe in Christ and change their lives and become a new creation in Christ through the government. That's what they're going to realize. And they're going to wonder. And your legacy is going to be damaged within your family structure. So that's something to think about. Now, that's, that's a little extra. I don't mean to add that on there. But, and I have on here on this point, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised if your kids, for those of you that still got younger kids and however, don't be surprised, teenagers or whatever, that you see some lashing out with them, the way that they conduct themselves. 
because they watch you. They see you who you support, a man that promotes hate and racism and all of that. And it's in within your household because you're the one maybe wearing merchandise and showing it and the rest of the family is divided because you chose to go down that path and split your family up and cause an uproar within the family. And don't be surprised if you get a call from the teacher or something because your child has lashed out and made fun of somebody, of whatever, racist, whatever, lifestyle, whatever, whatever's going on. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised if you find them involved in something that is, you know, cultic or, or, or involved in gangs or anything because you have set the example. Don't, you know, I don't know what this is about people, this Christians nowadays or people that profess that, that they want people to do work for them instead of them use it. The word of God said that it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Do you know what that means? That this word of God could cut through and penetrate people's hearts when you preach the gospel and live the life and share the word like we supposed to. We don't need Mr. Trump to do it for us. We don't need Supreme Court justices to do it for us. You do, the word will do the work and the Holy Spirit will do the transformation. And that's where the problem lies. The church has become so worldly and has gotten off track that people are being destroyed and you are destroying your family because you are a spiritual abuse, abuser and you've destroyed them. And I have on here, Proverbs 22 says, as we know, says train up in a ch child in the way that they should go. And when they get old, they may, they, they shall not depart from it. Now, what misconception is that people think because that scripture that it doesn't say it guarantees your child will never go wayward. It doesn't guarantee, it doesn't give you no guarantee of that. You just lay the foundation and you pray and you've done all what you can do and you hope that they make the right decisions in life. God, as we talked in other messages, gave, has given us free will. You hope that they make the right choices. You hope that they, if they get off track, that they'll be like the prodigal son and come on back home. So you can't sit there and interfere with God's work. He's given us the Holy Spirit to do the work. What do you think you need Mr. Trump for so much that you don't care what this, I mean, is there anything that the man can do that, is there a line that's crossed that you can say, you know what, enough is enough? I mean, I mean, this is crazy. And this is dangerous. And this is why it's spiritual abuse. And as I go here, as I conclude, and, and I'm going to give you that big point I was telling you guys about. You know, there's a movie that if some, if some of you, may, if you know the movie, put it in there. I, I want to maybe see it again. So I saw towards the end of it years ago. I know it's based off of a true story about a lady, a young lady that, I don't know, she was, she was a uh Girl, but she played, she was like a boy or something and uh, portrayed like a boy or something like that. I remember it was on Lifetime or something. And they found out that she was actually a girl or something like that. And I just remember, I don't know if she got lured to this house or whatever, but I remember the guys were there and they beat her up and they raped her and they killed her. And what a horrific story, you know, and, and I have on here because I want to say this. Many of you out here have never faced the threat of death or, you know, or, or, or major physical harm of any sorts. Many of you haven't faced that. Many of you not had your life flash before your eyes. And that poor woman and many others, and now in today's times, because of the racism and all of the hate that's being spread amongst Christians and things uh, out here, you have people that are fearing for their lives because of the hate and that you are supporting, that you did this. You didn't have to do it as we talked about many messages before. You could have went in the primaries and said, you know what, we reject this stuff. We're not gonna go along with this and continue to push hate and allow this to spread and division all of this to spread in America. You didn't have to do that. But you set the standard in your household and your kids are watching. And as I give you my final point, as we talked about, 
no human being, here it is, should have to deal with the fear of death or harm from a person who calls themselves a Christian. Let me read that again. No human being should have to deal with the fear or death of a, or harm from a person who calls themselves a Christian. It's bad enough that we have to deal with hate from within the world, but they shouldn't have to deal with it from those that are part of the church. That's where we are in society right now. Things have changed into a different level like never before, and you wonder why people don't want nothing to do with church folks. You wonder why the church's attendance is at an all-time low. You wonder why this is happening. Because you, you've fallen for the okie doke You've fallen for the snare of the devil. He's tricked you. He's got you to believe that you need to use a human being that and the government to fix this world and fix people instead of allowing the word of God to cut that heart within that person, the word of God to, uh, to transform them and the spirit to sanctify them and, 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 and all of the process that we go through as he develops us. As scripture says, if any person is in Christ, they are a new creation. All things become new and you know, old things are passed away and all things become new. So if you don't know the Lord and you struggling and God is trying to get your life right, ask me, ask some of my subscribers. I'll tell you about it. I got plenty of testimonies to tell you about it. We're going to make several more videos here as we close out this week, as we lead up to the election. Because I promised you my story about when I did not want my oldest son and how, I, how the Lord blessed that situation and touched me. And, and, and you have to hear this testimony. So we'll continue to shine the light on the devil, punch him right in between the chops and talk about issues the church run away from. Maurice Braxton, Evangelist for God's Channel. Until my next video, my friends, take care. God bless.